Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining. I think it's just uh, gone past 10 o'clock. Um, thanks for, start, for joining Brain Trust. Uh, slightly unusual this year that we're having to run it via Zoom. So hopefully all of the technology works for everyone, wherever you are uh, in the country or around the globe and uh, all of the webinars run successfully. So just a few housekeeping. Um, so we've got a number of sessions running across the next uh, four days. Um, we've got webinars running and we've got a couple of sessions that we're running as Zoom meetings. Uh, the webinar that you're on now, it's the, so gonna be the same link for all of the webinar sessions we're running this week. Uh, and then you should have been uh, sent the Zoom link as well, but we'll post it in the chat ahead of those um, Zoom meeting sessions, one of those, which is tomorrow, and then we've got another Zoom meeting session on Thursday. Um, so I'm gonna hand over to uh, Derek, uh, for those of you who don't know Derek, Professor Derek Scott, who's Chair in Physiology and Pharmacology Education, and Deputy Director of Medical Sciences Teaching at the University of Aberdeen. And Derek is gonna be talking today about using LT to enhance flexible learning, improve student outcomes uh, from the Aberdeen experience. Thanks very much. And I'll hand over to you, Derek. Okay, so before I start, um, I'm assuming people can hear me and they can see the screen. Um, my experience with Zoom is very limited. That's great. Okay, so I guess yeah, can. Thanks, um, what I want to talk about is our experience over almost the past year where we've been using LT for the first time. Um, what I'm going to try and kind of talk about is that we've had a lot of experience in our institution um, with AD Instruments products. And I mean, even as an undergraduate, I remember being taught how to use chart and things like this because our department is or was a very traditional physiology, neuroscience, pharmacology, anatomy department. Um, over the years, clearly we have merged with other disciplines like many of the rest of you have had to go through. Um, we had previously used Lab Cheater, and I think it was actually our teaching technicians who got wise to the possibil possibilities of Lab Cheater well before the academic staff um, understood its capabilities. And as part of that work, previously with Lab Cheater, we had learned a lot, particularly in involving students in improving what we do for our practical teaching, but actually our teaching in general. And I'll talk a little bit about that and how it's informed how we're using um, LT. As I've said, this is almost the end of our first full year of using LT. There was gonna be a lot of change. Clearly circumstances have made that change even more radical. Um, but I think that LT is actually going to prove to be a lifesaver for my school in adapting to the challenges ahead. So hopefully you'll get some idea of how we've used it, what we've learned, and what we think the future holds for us in using LT. So, as I said before, um, we had previously done a lot of um, pedagogic work using Lab Tutor, and we'd used a lot of the activities and practical materials that came with Lab Tutor. We'd created some of our own um, and I mentioned already we involved students in the creation of materials in Lab Tutor and got them to criticise what we had done, try and invent their own stuff um, and that proved to be very kind of um, constructive for us. When we kind of um, looked at the data we got from um, the type of pedagogic work we were doing, we weren't doing anything really complicated. A lot of the time we were just analyzing how long students voluntarily spent using the system, the grades they were achieving, these types of things. So um, that's something really important I want to say to those of you who are here. If you want to start gathering data about how you use um, kind of an LT to do pedagogic research, you don't need lots of fancy technology or fancy methodology. There's some really basic metrics we can get from the system. And I think some of you might have seen if you use LT already, that there are analytics that are becoming more and more powerful. So um, that's one thing I really want to encourage people to do because there's lots of brilliant data that you're gathering already without realizing it and you can use it really constructively. When we first introduced Lab Tutor, we had a lot of 
colleagues who were very resistant because some of the classes, for example, EEG, lots of people had traditionally done them in very old fashioned ways in the past with smaller groups of students. When you said, oh, we're going to have a class of 100 all doing EEGs in the same location at the same time, lots of people freaked about that and were really resistant. And I remember going into a class and someone got up in front of the students and said, if this goes wrong, it's all his fault. So I am aware that lots of you will be trying to use LT in institutions and some people will be totally up for the challenge, want to do great things. Sometimes you have to really help colleagues understand what the system can offer them. Um, but one of the ways we got around that was just by showing how good the system was by doing, letting people be there seeing that yeah sometimes things go wrong but a lot of things go right show them the benefits and a lot of colleagues now in our institution have really come around to actually using lots of the adi instruments products to better their educational offerings another great thing that came out of the kind of work with lab tutor that had been going on for a long time was we started collaborating with educational partners across scotland and further afield i should particularly mention robert gordon university and the university west of scotland and in collaboration with them and other scottish universities we formed a kind of informal partnership of sharing and i really like that about um, the people who are involved with ad instruments there's a sense of collegiality a community had shared summer studentship, shared projects, um, shared pedagogic work that we did with these um, kind of friends now, rather than just partners. Um, and a lot of kind of productive things came out of those relationships. And I would say I've made some lifelong friends now just with the collaborations started through Lab Tutor. So we've been gathering data from about 2013 onwards. And you can see at the side, we previously published some evidence of how we were introducing Lab Tutor and the benefits it was having. So to give you some example, um, what we've got here on the left hand side, this poor Ray who's got his face in an iced um, bucket of water. Um, Ray is now doing great things in the pharmacy world and he is being kind of um, supervised by Alistair who's just finished his PhD at Exeter University. They were one of the first examples of summer studentships where they were using the kind of AD instrument systems and trying to develop better practicals, looking at existing offerings and seeing how we could improve them. And on the right hand side, this is an example of one of our practical classes where we were trying to get other staff on board, showing them how you could do things like EEG with a larger class um, simultaneously with lots of students working together, get really good data, really clean data. And that was one of the first classes where we really convinced other people to get involved and start using the system. Um, Again, other summer studentships took place. This is Elaine, who was one of our teaching technicians. We don't usually wear stilettos in our teaching labs, but it was in the summer and we turned a blind eye. And Alistair, again, doing some work. And, and what we were trying to get them to do was just try different um, activities on the system that we had not had a chance to look at and give us their opinions about whether or not they thought they were interesting, stimulating or not. So we've done these types of kind of um, activities for a long time, and it's allowed us to um increase our offerings and also improve what we do even when we didn't have a lot of time to explore the system ourselves i know that lots of you as academic staff will be really busy with lots of activities already sometimes you don't have time to just sit down and look through all the things that lt can offer one of the things we did was we got students to help us with that they looked through stuff and told us what they felt was interesting and exciting and relevant to their curriculum so one of the things we faced in recent years is that our student numbers were increasing. Um, in our school, we keep talking about this thing called the tsunami. Our current honours year is the biggest we have ever um, had in the history of our school. Rather inconvenient, we thought it was going to be hard enough to deal with that under normal circumstances, but given our current circumstances, all these people were taking their honours finals in the middle of this um, global pandemic. So, for several years, we've been thinking about how we cope with increasing numbers and how we still provide quality, in-depth, practical training. We are a great believer in our institution that students should do proper practicals. They should be hands-on wherever possible. Some practicals, it's harder to do that. They need to be as accessible as possible. If someone's got a disability, that shouldn't matter. They should always be able to take part in the practical whenever possible. We want to make sure that we make practicals enjoyable. We want to make sure that when we have students who go through our practicals, they make them more employable. 
And one of the key things in our practicals as well is that we acknowledge that not everyone's going to go on and become a research scientist. So we're looking for students to exhibit skills such as time management, organisation, citizenship, looking after other people in the group, working together. So that's another thing we kind of stress to our students that when we do practical activities, they're not about just training them to be academics or researchers or working in the science industry, because a lot of them will not end up doing that. There are a set of other skills that we can highlight for them when we're using systems like LT to enhance our practical training. So why would we move to LT? Things looked very nice. We were using Lab Tutor. Well, we had been looking at LT for a while. Then we had been warned that Windows would be changing and it might pose issues for updates to Lab Tutor, and Lab Tutor would not necessarily be supported as much anymore. The kind of setup for Lab Tutor we had was hardwired into certain labs in one campus in our university. So that really restricted us that. If we wanted to run a data capture practical um, or use the system in other areas, in other campuses, we're in the north of Scotland. We have other campuses and placements in remote and rural regions. Um, if we wanted to expand the groups of students who could use the system, that was going to be very difficult to, um, for us. We also realised that the way things were changing, students should be able to access our systems from a range of devices, a range of locations, we needed to make the, um, the platform we were using easy to operate. If, there, if a student was using a tablet or a phone or a desktop, the interface should resize and adapt itself to the device they were using. So that was another attractive um, thing with LT. We'd seen what other people were doing and it looked as if that would tick all the boxes. Clearly, we were having an increase in student numbers, so we had to be aware of staff workload. If you've got couple of hundred honour students all doing really involved decent practicals that can take a lot of work to mark and to supervise and to organise so we were looking for ways to minimise that. Um, one of the problems we had was that when we discussed thinking about automation of some of the for example marking workload lots of people would say particularly for junior honours and senior honours honours classes if you automate things, you better be sure that your questions are still rigorous. You've got to make sure you're still testing critical analysis, problem solving. Um, so again, you've got to bear that in mind that when you start thinking about automation, lots of people will start worrying that you're going to dumb down your content and you'll just be assessing knowledge and memory and not really understanding. So when we look to LT, we realised with a variety of question types and with a bit of ingenuity, you could still assess things like critical analysis and problem solving. And I'll show some examples of that later on. Um, we had clearly seen what other institutions were doing with LT and we were quite jealous. But also we saw LT as a way to expand um, the benefits of what we'd done with um, AD Instruments products to other disciplines. Every time we talked about it, lots of people would say, that's just a toy that you guys in physiology or neuroscience or pharmacology or healthcare use, what benefit has it to us in say genetics or to general biology or to chemistry? Um, and we had to start considering that more about how we could show these disciplines what LT could offer because we are about to move to a new brand new set of teaching labs and these are currently, well, the building is still ongoing, but because of lockdown, construction is somewhat paused at the moment. Um, it is the building, the kind of um, white grey building on the lower left hand side of the screen um, next to our library, which sometimes the students call the Borg Cube. This is going to be a brand new collaborative science practical centre where there will be no paper, there will be no desktop computers. And because we're going to move in there with several other science schools, there is a complete review of why, how, when we do practical classes, can we do interdisciplinary classes, can we share resources and learn from others best practice, can we make classes more flexible, can we reduce the time we spend just doing the pre-lab talk and the post-lab talk and just writing and things, things you don't really need to be in a lab environment for. Um, so these are all challenges that we are having to undertake. Now this building was initially meant to be open in March 2021. I think with all the delays of lockdown and things and we had high winds this winter, it'll probably be near Christmas. Um, but this is, this is coming and we need to be ready for it. And LT was seen as a potential tool which would help all of us totally revolutionise 
how we teach practical work within this new building. So clearly, I come from a university that was founded in 1495, and whilst that's wonderful, and I'm very lucky, um, tradition can sometimes be a bad thing. I've mentioned already that even when you have something that can be useful, lots of people will resist using it. And one of the things we've tried to do over the past year is get people to see, invite them along to our classes, show them what we're doing, let them have a play with the system, have their own kind of sandbox folder and let them develop their own materials um, and try and get them to see how they might use the system to improve their own kind of classes. And that can be within my own discipline in school. But what we're also actually trying to do is show other people, even out with the sciences, the power of LT and actually that if they want to have a play with it and try it, they'd be very welcome to because they might find it might solve a lot of problems for them, even if they don't do um, biomedical lab research, because that's only a fraction of LT's power and usefulness. So, first of all, you have to get the money to pay for something like LT. Um, and at the start, this is something I've been trying to get LT for a long time. And one thing I got wise to was the fact that if you're trying to convince a dean or a head of department or a head of school, you have to explain to them why they should give you this money. Um, if they see that something's going to be complex, lengthy, expensive, controversial, and there's no clear benefit to them, they are less likely to give you the funds. You know, if they see that something might be popular, useful, it's a quick solution, then you might be more likely to have some success. So what we had to do at first was um, gather an evidence basis as to why we should um, have LT, what the benefits would be, what the drawbacks would be. Um, I mean, we looked at all sorts of metrics. We thought about staff time, we worked out our hourly rates and said, well, if you offset the time saved on us even doing things like marking against the initial cost for LT, it's even cheaper than the price that's quoted. If you look at the printing, we will no longer be doing. Again, you can offset that against the cost. So we actually got a bit wiser in terms of coming together with a business case for our um, school to explain to them why they should fund LT. So we convinced our school and all we had to do is get a team of people willing to use LT together. Now it says here physiology and academics and technicians assemble. That's a bit unfair because actually it wasn't just physiologists. It was a group of really like-minded people who were willing to try something new and had seen what we used in physiology primarily. Other disciplines had used the lab tutor system. But a lot of people saw the potential and got on board from the start. Um, and what we did was from the start we had some general kind of um, concepts. Whatever you do, you tell people about, you share best practice. Whatever you do, you try and gather feedback and data from the students. And whatever you do, if someone else is struggling to use LT, you help them use it. And those are the general principles. Um, LT in our um, school is not one person's toy. It's not for one group of staff or students. It's meant to be shared. It's meant to be useful for all. And if we can use it in imaginative ways to help other people, then that's what we do. And one of the reasons we came up with that kind of mode of thinking was that was the kind of collegiate community spirit that we had already experienced with lots of other Scottish universities. Um, and we realised that's very productive. So that was one thing we made clear from the start. This community of sharing was going to be really important for all of us. So the great experiment started about a year ago. Um, we had hoped to have LT installed in our um, systems by the start of the summer last year because we had to jump through all sorts of hoops about data protection and getting things signed off it took a bit longer but the initial agreement was that we would um, have LT access for 800 students. All activities that previously used lab tutor would immediately transfer their practicals over to LT because that would be easy but we also had a group of staff who run our first year medical science labs which have huge student numbers and have students from other disciplines and other schools. And we felt that would be useful because if students from other disciplines and schools saw the power of LT, um, they might be willing to go back to their schools and say, well, why aren't you using this wonderful tool? So we have a group of wonderful people led primarily by a guy called John Barrow, who decided that they were going to convert all of our first year medical science labs over to um, an LT format and it actually what they ended up doing was not just the labs other activities in re relation to things like enterprise entrepreneurship they also transferred over to LT 
to make them more flexible and make it easier for students who had trouble um, with illness or caring arrangements to take part in lots of activities. So that was a really good example of students kind of using LT for one purpose, but seeing its potential and taking it even further. Um, when we kind of looked initially at how we'd expand the use of LT, um, for a long time we'd used assessments such as case studies which students really liked. And when you look at lots of the material that comes with LT, lots of the particularly healthcare related material lends itself to certain case study scenario based assessments. So we had ideas that we might convert some of our paper based case study assessments over to LT format. And another kind of big thing that we were really keen on was that we had previously run some practicals that had used animal tissue in the past and it was very hard to get that animal tissue um, for the past few years. Um, but what we did have was recordings and video resources of experiments using that animal tissue and we felt it might be a possibility to make brand new practicals using the footage and the resources we had of those previously filmed and recorded animal tissue experiments to develop new content for LT and I'll show that in a second. So for every class we've been recording student feedback and that's a huge gargantian effort that's ongoing just now. Now that we've just finished marking exams we're going to turn to this huge body of data that we've got in the system about um, analysing student feedback for the past year. And as I said informally on the side one thing we're also going to be doing is trying to estimate how much staff time and printing cost and lab setup time, for example, that we have saved over the past year. We're going to try and calculate that value and subtract it off the initial cost of LT, again to show our school why that expenditure was justified. Again, that might be useful for other people because I know that I've heard in lots of kind of sessions like the Brains Trust, people trying to find ways to evidence or justify to their departments why they should purchase LT. So that's one idea of how we're trying to use an evidence basis um, to keep funding LT and keep justifying it and to expand its use. So like I said, we had some teething issues at the start. So um, if I just gave you a talk telling you that LT is wonderful, I don't think many people would believe it if I just said nothing went wrong. Actually, most things that went wrong were not to do with AD instruments or LT. First of all, we only got um, the contract signed off two weeks before term began. So it was total panic stations because there was all sorts of things about privacy, data protection, and it needed the right person's signature. So first of all, we had thought we would have the entire summer last year to develop stuff, to prepare, to train staff. That didn't happen. We had two weeks before term started to start moving stuff over to LTE. Um, we had different computer staff who set up our campus computers in the teaching labs, which needed the widget to allow um, data recording. It turned out that some of them had set up the computers differently. So um, the first couple of practicals we tried, some computers recorded data, others didn't. But actually it was surprising that the students didn't have a problem because they, you explained them what the issue was because they could see the system working on other people's computers, and actually it looks really all singing, all dancing and um, advanced. Lots of the students were like, yeah, there's gonna be the odd niggle, it's fine. Um, so our computer techs were off for the school holidays with their kids. So it took a couple of weeks to get the kind of um, data recording widget fixed on all of the computers, but as soon as that was done, everything was fine. And that was for more, for more formal lab practicals that we needed that to work. The other issue we had was that our university, just after we had uploaded everyone's details onto the LT system, changed the format of all students' emails, which does not seem like a big thing, but actually it meant that students had to be, after a few weeks of using LT, had to be told, look, your login's gonna have to change because your email has now changed. So again, that was not an issue with the system, that was an issue with our kind of internal university processes. And we also realised that because so many people were starting to want to use LT, we had to have some clear housekeeping rules about who's overseeing the system to make sure there's not duplication of materials, that students aren't doing a similar practical in one course to another, or that people aren't um, putting out kind of um, basically sloppy material. We had to have some editorial control. We wanted people to look at what we were doing with LT and be impressed, particularly the students. So, some challenges to begin with, but they weren't with LT and they weren't with any of the power lab systems. So we've got lots of staff, enthusiastic, keen to do stuff. We've got two weeks to get things ready. 
They'd had no training. They were only using the videos that were available on the AD Instruments website. Um, we had the biggest honours class ever. What did we actually manage to achieve? We were not too optimistic because we thought, yeah, we had all these grand plans. We're not going to achieve much. We thought we'd managed to transfer over the lab tutor practicals and not much else because everyone was so busy. So when we look at the practicals that we had to transition over really easily, that was very simple. So things like spirometry, lung function, ECG, EEG, EMG, nerve conduction, autonomic function, they were brilliant. We transferred them over. And the good thing was that in the past, there were certain aspects of the lab tutor versions of those practicals we were not as happy with because we felt that there were certain questions we wanted to ask. Some of the question might be a bit too medical for some of the biomedical students who want them to be more science oriented or if we were looking at say an honours class we maybe wanted to add in some questions that um, assess their critical analysis more. We found it was really easy to tweak the content and the format to make it more appropriate for those cohorts so that was a big success. Um, the things that we needed to happen urgently um, just to make sure we could replace what we'd done the year before the lab teacher worked like a charm. But then we had this brilliant first year team of academics who really embraced LT. They had a series of practicals and they decided they were going to add them all on to LT. So they have this brilliant practical in first year um, called CSI Aberdeen and it's about um, a murder in King's College which is the most ancient part of um, our university and they actually do blood typing and forensic analysis and they managed to develop a practical in LT about this um, and they had had no training whatsoever but together as a team they managed to convert all this material really quickly and have used LT throughout the entire year with these large classes of about 400 students um, in first year and that was really useful because again it gave students out with our school a chance to see LT and to try it. And the other things we have is as well some of our first year courses are shared with other schools like biological sciences. This allowed staff there to get a, a kind of idea of how we were using LT and what the benefits might be. Again this is some of the examples here they've been trying to, um, one of the things they thought about was how do we avoid just putting in free text answers? How can we automate some of the answers? Um, you can see the team, they came up with different ways in which students could actually say what they thought about their results from the forensic analysis, what the blood type was, things like this. So they tried a whole range of different innovations and actually what they've said is what they learned this year, they're going to change the practicals again for next year to make them even better. So that was really inspiring for us. These staff had no training this within the first couple of weeks of using LT and have come up with some really innovative kind of ways to improve their courses, deal with large class sizes and automate the assessment. Another thing that um, we hadn't planned for was that one of the first year team is also um, a tutor for this thing called Gateway to Medicine which is an access program which allows students who maybe would not have traditionally had the chance to go to medical school a chance to have enhanced training. So these students on the Gateway to Medicine program, which is really encouraged by the Scottish Government to widen access to medicine, they will spend part of their time at a local further education college and part of their time with us at the university. Um, my colleague, Dr. Marini, who built this material, he is their tutor and tries to encourage them through this year in strengthening an application for medicine. And one of the problems these students have is understanding some of the aptitude tests that they'll have to take for an application for medicine in the UK. So he actually has used LT to actually provide training materials and familiarisation materials and pastoral care materials to help these students integrate more to university, but also to help them practice for aptitude tests as part of their um, upcoming application for medical schools. So that's a way in which someone has used LT to help widen access to um, a high kind of competition area such as medicine. Um, it's not for lab practice, he's used it in a very innovative way. And these students, because they're scattered from all over the place, and because they're shared between two different institutions, uh, an FE college and a university, they can use the LT system anywhere they are and they can use it on their phone, they can use it on a tablet or a desktop, whatever. Um, and that allows them to um, help them stay in kind of, um, regular practice with this kind of um, 
pastoral care and training material, regardless of whether they're in formal classes with us at the university or not. So that again was a very imaginative way in which this was used. Some people had a go. Now, what I've done here is I've used an example from some of my own courses, again, to um, preserve people's anonymity. Some people just saw LT as, I'll copy and paste a pile of stuff from a Word document and go with that. And rather than have a go at them, we let them do that. And they themselves realised that was not effective and didn't work because they started seeing what other people were doing with the power of LT and changed it. So after a couple of weeks, when you went back into some courses, they really had changed. Um, I mentioned here that we had some people who were doing case studies and some of them were very quite involved where they were getting students to understand about how you apply science to real patients and that they um, kind of think about areas which were not necessarily part of our lecture-based material. The students had to really go and read more widely. We started having staff who really realised that free text, big copy and paste exercises from Word were not the answer and they started to use some of the question styles. A lot of them are only using some of the kind of, um, kind of easier question styles which they found easy to manage but what we're seeing is as they gain confidence with the system they're starting to try all sorts of new things and quite complex assessments at senior honours and junior honours they've managed to convert to um, the LT platform. Again, this is another example here in an honours ageing course. Um, there is an extremely difficult case study on ageing, um, which is not based on any of the lecture materials. The students have to go and find out about things for themselves. This is an example of someone here who, in conjunction with a clinician, started developing some um, case-based material, which they've posted on LT. In the past, um, they used to use um, essays. They found that actually that's a nightmare to mark and Sometimes the students really didn't understand things, were very good at finding things from the literature, but maybe not very good at applying it to real life. Um, last year they developed this case study which was done on paper. This year, as word got around about using LT, they were very keen to use it. So this kind of the use of LT is start to spread throughout our curriculum and people are coming up with all sorts of innovative ways to use it. I mentioned as well that we had previously bemoaned for a long time that we couldn't run certain practicals. Um, one of the kind of really important and really um, highly praised practicals we used to run was an Ussing Chamber epithelial transport practical. But it's really hard in the UK just now to get the right species of frogs for that. And um, we used to spend a fortune trying to get frogs from other places um, until it actually was hard to justify. And the final time we managed to get the frogs, we actually filmed the entire experiment and we got all the chart recorder data and we copied all that. It worked like a charm. And we've had this in the bank for a long time. And one of my colleagues, Professor Gordon McEwen, um, he had all this material and as soon as we got LT, he started trying to adapt this material into an LT practical. So you can see here, there's a bit of introductory material. We had all this video um, material about how we set up the chambers, how we kind of use the frog skin, how you do the section, how you collect the data. Um, and these videos were created by a student probably about seven or eight years ago, and we've been waiting for a platform to use them in some useful way. Now, these videos are not ever going to win us an Academy Award, but they're actually really useful. And um, the students in epithelial physiology this year used this, and it was a far more interactive experience than we've had in the past. Since we've been, a been unable to run this practical um, properly with the real tissue. A lot of the students have complained that, yeah, we're just looking at data, this is not engaging, it's not interactive. Feedback for this course shot through the roof this year because they felt that it was more interactive. Even if they couldn't do the actual experiment themselves, they could see what was going on, they could read the real data. And part of this practical is that the students have to actually extract the data from either the video or the data recordings which they are provided with. So you can see here that we provide them with chart recorder tracings um, from the real experiment and they have to analyse information from those chart recordings and input them into spreadsheets and manipulate things. They have to calculate the concentrations of drugs that were added, all sorts of different things like this. So this is an example of using real experimental data to build new practicals and that's something again our school has realised that lots of people are sitting on a huge amount of data they could use to build classes. So it's something that we're really kind of keen on expanding. Um, another interesting thing that occurred this year was that 
we had a staff member who previously run an essay based um, assessment and there were issues with staffing for that this year so they were keen to find something else but the problem is that member staff at the same time as they needed to develop something new they had had to have a lot of surgery on their eyes and were going to be visually impaired for a long time so they needed something which would be an alternative to their essay based assessment but because it was going to be in the honours year, they wanted something that would test problem solving, critical analysis, get the students reading original papers. And what she managed to do was come up with a problem solving exercise which integrated some of the existing clinical material on LT. And then she actually combined it with the students reading a paper and actually asking them questions about the paper, having to do calculations, having to interpret the graphs. Um, and she came up with this in less than a week. And this is someone who'd had no training, was having problems with their eyesight, but actually said that they found the interface for LT quite useful because the text is easy to read, it was easy to magnify, it was easy to use on different devices. And that's something we've heard from some of our students as well. People who've had visual impairment or learning disabilities, they actually find that LT is easier for them to actually read and access and operate with than standard paper-based or computer-based assessments. So that's been something, again, that has come out through the student feedback. Um, again, another example here of um, how Dr. Rainicek, who's the person who came up with this kind, of, um, uh, this kind of exercise, she's getting the students to look at real data from papers. And again, within the exercise, we're very clear that we do not have copyright of the paper and actually it's um, we've got all the kind of copyright and open access um, uh, warnings within the, um, the kind of exercise but it was really useful to show us that if you wanted to train the students on things like data analysis interpretation LT could provide a vehicle for that and one of the other things we've seen is as well is that I know that Dr Rainicek who built this she has said she's already seen ways to improve it for next year and she's going to do that. So there's already this, um, this kind of community of improvement which is going to happen um, over the next year with all these people who have used it, had some success and they're telling all their friends in our department about it um, and more and more people are starting to ask for access to LT. So in terms of student feedback, um, in general, we have collected feedback from all of our classes. The general comments that come up again and again are that LT is simple, it's easy to use, they don't need fancy training or they don't need to watch a video to show them how to use LT. Um, they can work on different devices remotely, it's really useful. One thing that's come out again and again is the students find it easy to work on, work on uh, in chunks, so they don't have to do an entire exercise that lasts for hours in one go. The work is presented to them in convenient chunks or sections so they're not as overwhelmed by it. Lots of students have reported this system is really useful. I have a learning disability or I have issues with um, visual impairment. It's really easy for me to use this system. And we've had a multitude of requests from students saying, well, why can't other things move on to LT? Particularly if they take classes from other parts of the school that don't use it. Another thing which we got feedback about was from our teaching technical staff. They thought something was wrong in our labs and teaching classrooms when they walked past because they said when they walked past, a lot of the time there is complete silence, which is really unusual. Usually there's lots of students talking. Now, when we do very interactive practicals and things, yeah, there's kind of bubbling kind of discussion. Um, but when we use some of the lessons in LT, the students were silent and engrossed and totally engaged. Now, at first we thought it was just the students saying, I just want to get this done and out of the room. But I mean, one day we said to the students, oh, there's optional exercise in LT that you can um, do. You can do them at home, you can go to the library, whatever. All those students sat in that lab from 10 o'clock in the morning to five o'clock at night, totally engaged. I have never seen anything like it. Um, and again, it was something our technical staff said, it was just a bit kind of spooky, um, that the students seemed to be really engaged. Even students who traditionally, would, they would not have expected to be so engaged. They were kind of, kind of surprised about how involved they were with the kind of practical material. And when we start looking at grades, we start students who never before had really good grades. The kind of the most dramatic example, and this is not unusual, um, if you look at something that's not practical, again to show people who don't do practical labs how they can use LT. The aging case study I talked about before, which was quite complex and rigorous, it had previously been used last year 
the questions were identical. It was just moved into LT format this year. Now we have a 22 point grading scale in Aberdeen. Don't ask, it's a weird system, but it's something we have to live with. Last year's cohort had an average grade of about 16. You know, class size was a bit kind of similar. This year, the average score grade jumped up to 21 and a half, 22. Now alarm bells start ringing because you start thinking, if I go to an exam board or someone looks at that, they're gonna say, you've dumbed down your class or your assessment, or you've changed your marking, or the students have got access to model answers. Well, the answer to all this was no. We got four people to mark that grade um, independently, just in case. I even started manually checking things in case the grade um, centre in um, LT had a mistake in it. But all the students had really done really well. Um, they can't have the model answers because the model answers do not exist in any way, shape or form. They are in my head. When we looked at the students who were taking part in those case studies, they had the same previous range of achievement. There were some people who'd never ever achieved a first class grade before, but all of a sudden were doing really well. And this was a really rigorous exercise. And when we asked the students afterwards in a focus group why they, think that, why they thought they'd done so well, the students said, well, when you see things in a PDF document or a Word document, or whatever, it can look really overwhelming because we can read through the whole thing in one go and every time you're looking at a question, you can see all this work which you have to do. When you're in LT, you just see one question at a time on one page and you can do it in chunks. We can do a little bite of the assessment, log out and come back to it. So that's been quite interesting for us that lots of the students like LT in that they can log in and do some work, log out. Um, lots of students who have part-time jobs have said it's really useful for them to fit completing assessments in LT um, around their work. They can have their phone or their tablet at work. If they've got a break, they can do stuff. We had students who had childcare who said, look, you know, I've only got short periods where I can do work. It's really handy. I can be at home looking after the kids. I can pick up my tablet, quickly log in, answer a couple of questions, log back out again um, if I don't have time anymore. So that's something we're going to explore for the next year. That presentation of material in bite-sized chunks seems to be really kind of appreciated by students and seems to be benefiting them. So then COVID happened and again we start to panic because we were at, almost at the end of our academic year. Things had been going brilliantly and we had plans about what we were going to do with LT and our labs were shut down as happened with many of the rest of you. So the final practical we still had to deliver was one for over 200 students on renal physiology. And this was based around urine analysis. And I've got a picture there of some of the things we do. We get the students to dipstick urine, do all sorts of acid-base analysis. And I had to find an alternative for this really quickly. And LT allowed me to develop an alternative within one day. And actually, it was probably within 12 hours, I had managed to create an online version of our urine analysis practical using existing LT content and combining it together with what we'd done for um, um, in our previous kind of practicals. So that was driven by necessity, but actually the product was so good and so effective, we're just going to use that from now on. So the students will still come in and do the practical, but rather than filling in um, things on the VLE. Um, we've got a far more interactive assessment, which is in LT. Um, and I've also been able to use that renal practical for some of our dental students because they were also due to have their renal block after lockdown began. So that's an example of how LT used very quickly can help us solve a lot of problems very quickly as well. So now what are we going to do with LT? We're almost coming to our end of the year. We had a, a set of plans which um, a lot of the kind of ideas have been driven by how we adapt to COVID. So we've got a lot of requests from our molecular and biochemical colleagues and those two things like genetics, microbiology, that they want to use LT if possible. Our healthcare programmes, they've been looking at LT. They're really keen to deliver parity of experience and grading and assessment across different campuses and placements across the north of Scotland or if students are in other countries on elective placements. So that's another thing that um, work that's ongoing just now. We had previously before COVID had committed to delivering some foundation apprenticeships um, in technical science for local um, senior school children. Um, 
clearly COVID will have to alter how we do that, but we thought about using LT as a way in which students could record their experiences as a logbook for skills um, to, to help them with assessments, even if they're in their school most of the week and we only get to see them one or two afternoons or a day a week, we were going to use LT as a way to deliver these um, foundation apprenticeships. And we've also been considering about um, how we help teachers across the north of Scotland or beyond improve their um, continuing professional development. Teachers quite often are having to deliver advanced um, scientific techniques um, as part of the Scottish curriculum, which some of them never did when they were um, training at university. So um, we have students, or we have um, teachers in the Scottish curriculum who maybe trained in botany a long time ago, but are now being asked to teach PCR and do practical classes in PCR at school level and some of them need a bit of help. So we're thinking about using LT to deliver continuing professional development for these teachers so that they can improve their training as the curriculum gets more and more detailed and complex um, for um, school pupils in Scotland. And the other thing that we've realized is our teaching technical staff are gonna be really brilliant in developing and authoring content in LT and we want to get them more involved because some of them have got some brilliant ideas and we could also use LT in training some of our new technicians both in teaching and in research. But before Covid happened we had a range of other ideas how we were going to use LT in the coming year. One of the types of assessments we do a lot in Aberdeen at the honours level is that we um, adapted the OSCE or the OSPI style assessment, which is used a lot in healthcare, where students rotate through multiple stations and get assessed on a skill or how they do a certain technique or how they record data. Um, and we've adapted these types of assessments for a range of science subjects. They're really rigorous, they're really appreciated by students, um, but the assessment of these stations can be really hard because you can have a large number of students going through such kind of assessments really quickly. Um, the students practice how to do experimental skills or a technique or analysis for a full day in advance of the assessment. They've got access to videos online which they can use to do homework and practice more and more on. And they come in for their OSCE or their OSPI in this case and they are assessed over an hour and the students record their answers at each station or there's an examiner who gives them a grade or records a result at that station. We had planned to use LT to automate some of the grading and the processing of the assessment of our OSPEs for these science subjects. We had previously got students to record a lot of video material and what we planned this year was that instead of the students writing in their answers they were going to have a tablet and they would take it around with them to different stations and they would record their data and in real time they would be graded and it would allow us to give feedback much faster to these students and it would also mean that different groups of students who came in for assessment we could easily put them into different sections on LT so that they could have a randomised set of questions or assessments to stop students conferring and um, cheating. So if someone in the morning saw what the stations were they couldn't tell someone in the afternoon oh this is what you're going to be faced with. The other reason why we're really keen to use LT next year in this OSPI exercise is that we could get more staff involved in authoring more stations. Lots of staff have got ideas, they just don't know how to author them effectively because a lot of them say, I'm not that technically um, able. One thing we've shown um, a lot of our staff is that to use LT, you don't have to have a great degree of computer literacy. You don't need a huge amount of training, you can do great things. And one of the kind of main brilliant things we've got is that we have a huge library of video materials, really short video materials, um, so that people don't get bored, on lots of different scientific techniques and skills. And um, these were generated by students and we're going to try and integrate these into some of the kind of um, blended or online activities that we're going to have to provide because of COVID in the new academic year. So that was our original plans. Clearly, whether we get to do all that because of um, the changes caused by COVID, we're not sure. Like I said, the only way we could do this is because students had already helped us create stuff. And that is a really kind of big thing I want to get across. When you're using LT, students can be brilliant partners. They're so imaginative and um, they're really brilliant to do things. Um, Jack, who's in the picture here, and Cameron, who was in the picture before, um, they used their phones, they used free editing software, and they developed loads of these things for us. Um, and they've been so valuable. Um, and their peers, I mean, 
Jack is now a medical student down in Queen's College London and Cameron's doing a PhD. Since they've developed these videos, they've been accessed thousands of times by the students and they've been used by the students, not just for the assessments that they were designed for, but to help them revise for other classes as well. So what I would say is if you're creating things for LT, sometimes students can be a really brilliant partners for you. So, like I said, our video development, the videos we're going to try and use to integrate into LT to develop more kind of assessments. Um, they were developed by students for us. Um, they're relatively easy to do. They were teaching us how to develop these videos. That's something we want to expand more. Again, it's something we feel that could help boost our offerings in LT, but also help us cope more effectively with the blended online challenges that COVID is kind of forcing a lot of us in universities across the world um, to kind of undertake. So in summary, what we've done with LT was a total team effort. I'm here talking about it. Um, the academic staff and technical staff I work with, they are the ones who made it happen and they've come up with all sorts of things we never dreamt of at the start of the year. Work with your students as partners. We build a lot of the stuff, they improve it or they help us build it. Um, one thing we've seen is it is okay to let people make mistakes in LT. What you'll find a lot of the time is that staff will make mistakes or they'll not understand the power of LT, do the most simple thing, when they see what their colleagues are doing or the feedback that colleagues are getting from students and they have time to play with the system, they start improving their lessons themselves. They learn what works and they are motivated to improve it. And even if it works brilliantly, all our staff have already identified ways in which they can improve their LT lessons for next year. When we can ask the staff why they like it, they like it because they can get involved. They are not reliant on other people to build things for them so that when they see their vision, their vision is achieved because what they wanted is actually in front of them. They spend more time teaching in practical labs rather than dealing with technical issues. One of the brilliant things about with lab teacher and LT is that even if a student doesn't care about channel settings or is not the most technically savvy student around, they can actually you're not spending classes worrying about getting things set up or calibrated. Um, staff say they spend more time teaching and talking about why what they're recording or learning about matters. And that is something that really makes the experience far more positive for them. Um, and they're also able to adapt, even for using pre-existing lessons from LT, it's easy to adapt existing material to suit the specific student cohort you're working with. So for example, the renal practical I talked about, I have a slightly different version for the dentist compared to the science students and I was able to achieve that in five minutes so that's really useful as well. Um, my kind of final thing I would say is that do not be afraid to try mad things or unusual things, it may work. Um, at the start of the year we had vague ideas about what we were going to do. Um, what we've said to people is if you want to use LT on something completely strange and novel, if you think it'll help us then do it it may work. And even if they don't get to use it with students, it may help that staff member um, develop confidence and actually come up with ideas for activities that will work. So I think that's a key thing. Don't be afraid to try stuff. You can end up with some really magical products at the end of it. And it really kind of um, helps your students learn better. And that's really why we're all here. We're trying to make things better for our students um, as well as our staff. Because again, if both sides enjoy it, you get a far superior um, experience for everyone. So I want to finish by acknowledging the people who've really been involved with our work with both Lab Tutor and LT over the years. So Alistair, Jack and Cameron, um, Alistair's just finished his PhD, um, Jack is now a medical student in London and Cameron's doing a PhD here in Aberdeen. They've done a lot of the early work, um, they were involved in summer studentships, um, some of them have got a huge number of publications out of those summer studentships. Um, but they really were willing to turn around to me and say, yeah that's nice but we've got a better idea. Um, and that's really brilliant when students turn around and say to you, yeah, you need to look at this from a different angle. They've really made us improve what we do. Um, the academic staff who got on board this term, um, either in designing material or teaching the classes using the material on LT, so Gordon, John, Pietro, Anne, Alison and Stephen. Our teaching technical team who've been involved for a long time and probably saw the um, positives of lab tutor and LT long before we did. Um, they've been really brilliant. Um, I like to embarrass them by putting that picture at the bottom of the screen there. Um, uh, every time they see that they cringe, um, but they are really brilliant as well. They've got a real can-do attitude 
and help us make things happen. And finally, to the other staff and PhD demonstrators who've contributed to this activity over the years, um, we would not be in the position we are um, without their input and help. Um, and with that, I'd like to say thank you for your attention and I'm happy to take any questions if we've got time for it. So. Thanks, Derek. That was fantastic. Um, I think we have a few minutes left. So uh, if you can hit the Q&A panel, Derek, I think there's seven questions in there already. We'll try and get through um, as many of those as you can. So if you can just uh, go to the question, hit the answer live button and then okay. uh, answer that question. Uh, we'll try and get through as many as we can, but we'll leave Derek on as a panelist for the uh, next hour so he can type in answers to any other questions that come up um, during Tom's session. Okay. Uh, do you want me to just orally answer the question now? Please, yeah, if you just click the answer live and then, and then, and then uh, speak, yeah, speak your answer, that'd be great. Thanks, Derek. Okay, so um, the first question there is about if large classes did have trouble with background noise, students talking, air conditioning. Um, we do in our older labs because, again, in the lab that I had the picture of, um, they were retrofitted and they do have large air conditioning units. Um, we have the ability to turn them off though. It doesn't provide a lot of signal noise on the system, particularly when we're doing delicate recordings, but so that's good. Um, students talking, um, not so much. Actually, we find that the students are a bit quieter when they're using LT and lab tutor, to be honest, because they are engrossed, because they, they have to concentrate. One of the big things we make clear to the students is that the main reason you'll get things wrong is not because you can't work the equipment, it's because you don't read the instructions. You scan, you don't read. So it's not really been a big issue. In our new teaching labs, um, there is a plan that students will have an earpiece so that we could have multiple classes in simultaneously in different zones in labs. Um, that has currently been trialled just now. So the idea could be that instead of me yelling at the front or having a microphone, I would just speak into a uh, mouthpiece and a student would hear me speaking in their ear. So they're only allowed to have an earpiece in one ear, but that's something we're trialling just now. But noises um, and kind of lab equipment taking over, air conditioning, not much of a problem, but we've got the ability to turn a lot of that off. Um, the next question is about what caused the faculty to listen to technicians about first looking into LT and switching technology. I guess that was because Basically, I learned a long time ago, you do not cross your technicians, you do not um, cross your administrative staff, and you don't cross your technicians. Without them, you are nothing. And if they're telling you that something is worthwhile and important, you listen to them. And actually, they're very practical about it. They're saying, look, you know, if you look at your class, you spend a lot of time doing this, you spend a lot of time doing that. If there's a way to get rid of some of that unessential stuff, then we should do it. Um, the other thing was as well is that they're very good at looking at the bigger picture, looking at the logistics. If you've got to run a practical multiple times, think about where the equipment is, they're very good at kind of thinking about that. So um, that was the main reason. Plus as well, I have learned a long time ago that lots of teaching technicians know far more about science than a lot of highly qualified professors. So um, I, I, it was a lesson well learned early in my career um, and it's actually never failed me to go along with that kind of maxim. Um, the next question about evidence-based analysis to support using LT, what did we present to the higher-ups? Well, we looked at the cost per student, we looked at estimates of how much time we would save, we looked at how we could expand it to other um, courses and solve problems. So for example, if we look at um, students who are in different um, campuses um, or have issues with travel or disabilities, we presented that it would be useful for them. We looked at our printing budget. We were really being pushed to reduce that. We'd already done it, but we said, look, we could get rid of lots of lab manuals by using LT. Um, we looked at um, the cost per student and we looked at other things that we should bought for students and worked out that it wasn't that much. We did one example with LT, a class, and we basically worked out my hourly rate and subtracted that cost off the initial cost of LT and showed that if we could multiply that up across every practical in our school, just on the biomedical side, we would pretty much pay for LT within a year or two. If we expanded it over time to healthcare and all the other 2,000 students in our school, then we would make even better savings. We also talked about generating income through CPD activities because I know that some um, institutions like Robert Gordon University, they use LT to deliver continuing professional development and they charge for those courses and that provides some income to offset the cost of LT. So these are the types of things that we looked at. 
Um, and we also showed some of our early research from Lab Tutor again to show them that you know this is something that we've um, researched for a while. Um, the next question. Uh, one one at, last question, Derek, and then we'll move on okay. to Tom's presentation, if that's okay, please. Um, basically, it was um, Raj's question about knowing more about pedagogical research. Um, I'm totally happy you collaborate with anyone, but what I would say is look at your analytics, um, be willing to, I mean, I have colleagues who actually put in their survey in as part of the LT class. So if you get ethical approval, you can maybe put your kind of um, survey within the class, but again, some people might be concerned about anonymity as part of pedagogic research, but as you're doing focus groups, what I would say is that lots of us have access to really simple metrics um, within LT already, we should be using that more, but also as a community, we could probably help each other and do collaborative work. It's something I've done particularly with Ian Rowe and Stuart Cruikshank and Alison Straff at Robert Gordon's and also people like um, Jack and Tony at UWS. Um, really useful way to do pedagogic research, even the odd poster or abstract. Lots of us who are on teaching contracts find it hard to do um, research because we're so busy. And it's those benefits, I think, in cooperation with other institutions, if you can show people the benefits that you can help people do more pedagogic research and actually um, solve a problem in another institution that overcomes those structural challenges that someone else asked about in the questions. Fantastic, Derek, thank you so much. It was a great talk. Uh, I know there's some uh, further questions that um, if you wouldn't mind typing in some answers yeah. as we go through Tom's session, that would be uh, really great, thank you.